welding would probably be one of my dream jobs or um, working in a zoo because I love animals and I've got a zoo at home. I would love to get in the U of O and um, take architectural drafting. That's what I want to do. I'd like to go to school and become a travel agent and someday open my own business as a travel agent. My hopes and dreams for all three of my children um, were that they could grow uh, mentally after they got out of high school, that they could find success in the community, that they could find jobs um, and have happy, well-rounded lives. Since Mike did his, he was the first one to get to have an opportunity to do a job shadow. He did his shadow yesterday from seven to noon. Seven to noon. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Five hour shadow. Wow. And why was it five hours? YTP got started in our district um, because we had a big need for transition services for our students. Um, in the early 90s, the Department of Education um, really started providing training for districts and requiring us to really take a look at providing transition services for students 16 and over um, who are identified as having disabilities. And in our district, we didn't have those services. And we didn't have money to get those services really started, and we didn't really know where to start. And so when the opportunity arose for us to apply for the grant with Springfield, we jumped on it because we needed to do some systems changes in our district. And this was going to give us the resources, the monetary resources, and the consultative kind of resources that we needed to get jump started um, and starting to design transition services for our students. We work with uh, kids that are struggling in school, kids that are about ready to drop out of school or to graduate from school, who can benefit from some services from Voc Rehab and the school district in uh, developing skills they need to survive in the outside world. Um, we feel that some kids it's okay for them to go on to LCC and kids set that kind of goal for themselves for further training and some kids uh, want to go directly into the job market so then we need to give them some skills so they can maintain jobs. And I have the Smoke with Sun. Mm -hmm. That's the Life Skills sort of support yeah. class. Mm -hmm. and the team is made up of a, a teacher who has some dedicated time, almost half of their, their time while they're in the school, working with a vocational rehabilitation counselor and a transition specialist who is probably the most important piece of the team because they have a full-time job and they're dedicated to serving students directly. Those three folks uh, do a lot of the planning and a lot of the implementation of that plan together. Uh, it's a very unique arrangement in the sense that they, they really do meet regularly, they really do make decisions around kids together, and they really make effective decisions. As a VR counselor, my favorite part about YTP is, is being really creative with this, this population because there, there's a lot that we can offer that that is just through brainstorming ideas with uh, the YTP specialists or the parents or the kids and um, trying to build self-esteem and experiences that might uh, provide them a, a good work history so they can get the next job. Well, I don't think that all kids fit into the regular school program or the traditional uh, education and so to me anything anytime we can save kids and make them successful and so that they can go out into life and earn their own living and feel good about themselves I think that's you know that's what we're here for as a school board and as a district
Well, first of all, we sit down with the student and the book rehab counselor, and we give them a little bit of information about YTP, what it is, what we do, how we're doing it, how it's funded. Um, then we go through uh, and ask them, you know, what do they want to do? Do they want to graduate from high school? Do they want to get a job? Do they want to live by themselves? You know, what do they see themselves doing in five years? Where do they want to be? And then just sort of work out a plan that uh, steps that they can follow, you know, get some job experience, take some classes in school. Um, do they need uh, outside help, some outside counseling? Do they need some, do they have some health problems? Do whatever it, it, it's necessary to do to try to help them get where they want to go. So we take those steps one at a time. We want to see that the kids are, are, uh, are really interested in this and so sometimes they might do an unpaid work experience and get school credit for it and they sometimes they just blossom and they just say yes I absolutely want to do this or we might switch it over and, and change and then we have more information about what the employment plan may need to look like and what barriers to employment may come up and how we can address that the plan? Um, I think my job is to help kids reach goals and, and part of that in the beginning is helping them decide what goals are and reassure them that they can have goals, no one's going to take them away from them, and help them figure out how to get there. Planning for us is something that happens the length of the time the kids are in the program. It's not just something that happens once a year and I think that our job club format is something that has been able to help that plan materialize and, and, be, and be sustained so that it really is a, a process that continues to happen uh, over and over. So the planning piece is the most dynamic piece of our, our program. Without the planning, we don't know where we're going. The most thing that actually helped me during the program is um, building up my math skills because um, welding contains a lot of math, um, especially with fractions and decimals. And um, with me being a slow learner, I it helped me quite a bit to learn the the fraction part and the decimal part of getting the the dimensions of how long and how wide and stuff like that. So um, it's actually made it pretty easy. We teach uh, academic skills, help them struggle through school and, and get the required work done and give them additional help so they can go through the process of graduating from school. When they go to LCC or go to community college, sometimes they need support in just getting through the paperwork, choosing the right classes. Sometimes we do uh, corrections on if they're failing classes, we'll help them get the right tutor or, or the right study time in order to pass their classes. And they, they helped me a lot with all my schooling and they made sure that I followed through and graduated so I could go on to go to college. We try to really match students with the particular job to find out what the student wants to do and then go out and find an employer rather than just have a bank of employers that we just shuffle kids off to. We really try to um, match them up one-on-one. -on -one. If a student wants to do fast food, then we'll try to find him a job in fast food. If he doesn't want to, we're not going to try to push him in that direction even though we might have some contacts. If they want to work in a, in a laundry, then we'll go out and try to develop a, a job in a laundry. If they want to work in a production area, then we'll try to match up an employer. We go into the employer and we talk about that one student and we, we look at what, what the employer wants to have and then we look at the skills that the student have and we try to match them up. Well, I'm very pleased the way it's working out this year. Uh, it's the first time in my 27 years of teaching in Springfield School District that we've actually been able to put students out on the actual job sites in industrial companies. I think the kids in the program have all uh, 
been real good and, and able to really watch and, and actually understand what goes on. It's a good program that I think, you know, it's really benefited kids and, and them being able to actual, actually make some parts that actually are going somewhere and, and being used. Some of the students that we work with have a variety of jobs now and are out there being successful. We have one student that trained to be a chef and held a job as a cook for a couple years and decided what he really wanted to be was a truck driver and went through truck driving school and now drives a truck. We have a student that delivers drywall for a building company in Eugene. We have a student doing cement work. A student works at uh, Territorial Seed here in Cottage Grove doing grounds work. Um, we have students who are uh, CNAs that are going into that field. We have some students that go into fast foods and into retail. Um, I deliver sheetrock to uh, houses and businesses and I drive the truck, the big flatbed. And once we get there, I stock the houses or the, the businesses with the sheetrock. They uh, help me with my schoolwork, and they help me with, you know, finding a job, learning some responsibility. I would, I would definitely recommend the program. Without YTP, I'm sure I wouldn't have graduated, and I, I probably wouldn't have the job I had now. I think it's really, YTP is really different because we're really hands-on and we don't just get to know the student from, you know, nine to three at school. I mean, it, it goes so much more beyond that. We're involved with their family life, we're involved with their social life, we're involved with their academics, um, helping them, you know, with their independent living skills. I mean, we're, we're more than just a, a school service we're like a life service I guess you that's how I feel I mean I'm really involved with the kids totally and I think it's really hard not to be when you get to know them like you do and you get to know so much about them and you just want to help them be successful so it's not it's not a counseling program it's it's not just a mentorship it's it's so much more uh, the YTP program provides social activities. We have taken our students to wildlife safari, we've taken them to the prom, we've taken them to uh, the coast and to the mountains camping and so through a variety of activities they learn that they do have the ability to make friends, be sociably acceptable and really be liked by other people and that's, that's a really important part of what we do for kids. We had some fantastic results with our kids. We, um, one kid is a firefighter right now in Colorado, and um, and the neat part about that situation was it got to a point where he wasn't passing the test needed to be able to keep the job. They sent him back from Colorado and said he's not passing the test. We're not sure if he understands the safety rules and regulations, and and we looked over and his particular disability was a reading deficit with a, a reading and uh, he wasn't able to process the questions and actually physically write them down. So he worked with the employers helping to educate some of the ADA rules and saying this is something, this is an accommodation that this kid needs is possibly an oral test. Let's, let's, we believe he understands the material, let's try it out. So the, the employer was able to, to bend some of their rules and be able to work with this student and, and to prove to everyone that this kid knew what he was talking about and he was able to, to perform the job duties. And, um, and he was successful, he was able to pass the test, and he was thrilled. Maybe you might be interested in becoming a cook, 
are any of those jobs interesting to you? But what I've learned about preparing kids for transition through the youth transition program is that um, it's an we need an intensive system of supports for kids with disabilities. They need um, to, to have accountability with um, a small number of kids. They need to have a link with an adult who's going to help mentor them through um, those high school years and transition years and give them specific training in certain areas because they aren't going to just pick it up by osmosis. They just don't do it. Some kids do. Most kids with disabilities do not. They need specific instruction and a lot of support systems. They're going to be there for them over an extended period of time. I mean, it's, and I think that's one of the benefits of YTP is that kids aren't just thrown out when they graduate from high school. We continue to have contact with them. We call them for uh, to see how they're doing. They call us to say, I need some help. You know, I want, decided I wanted to go to school. And then we try to reconnect them with the book rehab counselor, get their file opened again, get some help with them going to school, or perhaps they uh, something happened with the job and maybe we can go out and help them try to find out what happened, get their job back, or get a new job. Um, we're just, it's a constant cycle. We're not just pushing kids out and saying you're on your own now. They can call us whenever they need help. And we'll try to help them. We're real proud of the results that we have with our kids. We have kids um, who are in competitive employment and have been for some time, who have, some of our kids have families now, um, and they're managing households, um, holding down jobs, raising kids. Yeah, Adam is another student um, that we've had for a long time. Uh, he's been out of this program for a long time, but we keep in very close contact. He was uh, an SED student, an emotionally disturbed student at the high school who just saw no reason to be there. And he had dreams that everyone told him he couldn't reach. He wanted to be a uh, hunting um, guide in Alaska. And everybody told him there was no way he was going to be able to do that. He didn't have the patience. He didn't have the skills. And about six, out, six years after everyone told him that, he is now a hunting guide in Alaska. I would have to say I, I've seen the schools become more optimistic about the students that they're working with. Now where before the two schools that were new, teachers were holding back saying this kid, is not, there's no way they can work, this, this is going to be tough. And, um, and I think it is tough, but I think with a good team operation it can work and with uh, especially the YTP specialist involved and having them at the work site and having them at school and having them run the job club so that the kids know that there's somebody around they can talk to and, um, and get good information and feedback for. And then having a, a, the communication there between the YTP specialist and the employer and the employer and myself. We, we ha commonly have meetings with all three of us and um, I see that as a real benefit of just uh, I, breaking down the barriers for what these kids can do. I recommend this program to parents, other parents, all the time because I see so many kids who graduate from high school and then um, hit the wall, so to speak. They're just unable to go out into the world and, 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 and do well, succeed. And I think that it's a wonderful program. Um, I really wish that it could be available to every single child who graduates from high school. When we talk about hopes and dreams, we're, we're talking about giving kids an opportunity to have hopes and dreams again. Most of these kids, and, and many regular kids, give up dreaming about the time they're in fourth grade. What happens is they get caught up in a system that has some expectations for them that overpowers expectations that they would like to have for themselves. They gave up on that desire to be a rocket scientist or a doctor or a, an astronaut, all of which are dreams, but those are the kinds of things that empower them to, to want to evolve and become something else. So I, I think that this program 
allows him to return to the drawing board and with the assistance of, of people that are a team of folks helping them get to the place they want to be, go after some of those dreams and whether they become a rocket scientist or just somebody that's working on a launching pad, they have an opportunity to again dream again and then somehow find a way to get there.